Well, hi, and welcome to my shop uh, this morning. Um, so I'm going to do a couple of uh, preliminary things here before we start actually working on this. And I'm going to look at the uh, manual and a couple of things. That, thank you very much. I got some interesting comments. Looks like I'm going to go back and replace the diodes I put in. Uh, two, two of these, but I'll replace all three diodes that are in these. For reasons I'll explain shortly. And uh, otherwise, the real focus here is to check the operation of this meter at this point. Uh, and do any, any uh, calibration stuff that needs to be done and see if I can get this thing on, on target. And frankly, after doing these three meters, uh, I'm just a little overwhelmed with all the stuff having to do with all of them. So, <laughs> so I think that's where I kind of want to start. Um, looking at the manual here and uh, just look at a couple of things. So let's do that. Okay, f first things first, this is the view outside of my house uh, since yesterday morning. And if you remember, I mentioned keeping an eye on this thing here to judge how much snow was coming. Um, so it's not an awful lot of snow has fallen out here. Uh, my, my game with disappointed tones for some reason. I think we've probably only gotten uh, maybe a foot altogether. More is supposed to come. It's supposedly snowing right now, but there's no snow falling out there. So that's a situation. Uh, fortunate for me, the snow plow has gone by on the road out here and plowed, of course, all the snow onto the end of my driveway. So, but that's okay. So that that's what happened. We didn't get nearly, but it's supposed to snow all day today. So, so maybe another 10 centimeters is coming. I think I saw a flake go by there. So the first thing I want to talk about, and I want to thank the uh, viewer who pointed this out. Um, when uh, rather than do what I would normally do, which is grab a 007, uh, a 1 in 4 007 um, uh, rectifier to stick in here, I would just normally grab those. Instead, I thought I'd be smart and do a little analysis and see if I can pick something other than the uh, 007 because I'm going to run out of them eventually. So I did my analysis, came up with a need for a reverse voltage of somewhere in the range of 200 volts or so <clears throat> and that turns out to be a serious underestimation here let's just so <clears throat> if we look at what this diode is going to experience here we and we think about the uh, a unit after having charged up this capacitor which might be I don't know a fraction of a second after you turn it on so you now have about 160 170 volts sitting here so that 170 volts is applied across here but now the transformer, uh, and like because of the AC signal here, goes into the other half of the cycle. So this point can be driven minus 160 volts. Probably more than that, in fact. Probably more like, well, I don't know. Maybe minus 200 volts. So you might have minus 200 sitting on this side of the diode. And meanwhile, you've got a charge of 160 sitting here. You add those two together. And you're looking at 360 reverse volts here. That's quite a bit more than the diode I put in here, as I remember it. So I, I, I understrength the diode here. Now, they, obviously they didn't fail immediately, but I believe, you know, with reverse voltage below the limit, the, uh, the instant uh, limit of the diode is going to kind of keep banging away at it until, uh, uh, until it does fail prematurely, which might be 20 years from now, I don't know. I don't really know. So I think I gotta change all three of these with a more appropriate, and I'll just put the 4007 in there, and uh, and away we go. So that's the story there. I failed to assess properly the reverse voltage this diode was gonna experience, but now I know better. Okay, second thing. Uh, I thought it'd be interesting to look at this a little bit in the manual. This is the manual for the meter I'm working on. Caution, never touch any part of the wiring while the instrument is plugged into an AC outlet. You think about the people who make these kits and then sell them off to anybody who's got the money. They really don't know what kind of person is trying to put this kit together. So, you know, assumably if you've got a little bit of electrical knowledge and uh, ability to maintain your own safety, that's one thing. But if you're stone cold to this kind of stuff, yikes. Wouldn't you be nervous writing these manuals? So what do they say? Do not use the VTVM on a grounded metal bench, a radiator, or other grounded object. You know what they left out of here? Plumbing. They should have 
if they're going to mention you know radiator they shouldn't have mentioned plumbing in your house they didn't so the basic rule is you're doing any of this kind of work you should have no grounded structure within reach now that's pretty impossible because the equipment on your bench uh, the a lot of them the case is is grounded back to the hydro neutral but you shouldn't have anything else within range within uh, reach and touch range um, around you so you cannot make the mistake of grabbing something like a, like a sink faucet while you're holding your I don't know voltmeter lead while your hand is shorted to it without you knowing it what else did it say here remove the this is an important rule I almost never follow this remove the power from the equipment under test before you attach the test leads uh, this is a safety rule that is recommended all over the place. You shut the power off to the thing you're testing, you connect up the test leads, and then you turn the power on. No, I'm not going to do that because this is an, what, what, what I would call an administrative safety rule. So you put this rule in your book. You tell all your employees or your buyers, read this rule and follow it. But the fact is you can't follow this rule. You'd be turning the power on and off to whatever you're you're poking around with uh, over and over and over and over again. Every time you move your voltmeter test lead, you'd want to turn it off and turn it back on. You'd also not be using a handheld probe. You'd be using clip leads all the time to follow this. So what this does, what this rule does, the reason I call it an administrative safety rule, is it keeps the administrator safe, but it's of no use to the people actually doing the work. I used to spot these things where, where I used to work. Uh, I used to point them out. Uh, it's not my own original thinking. I, I read about this in a book on, on safety. And, uh, you know, the classic one is guy gets hurt, goes into his boss's office, tells the story, his boss says, well, don't ever do that again. And the boss thinks he's done something, but he's done nothing. So we got to watch out for that kind of stuff. So that's why I don't follow this rule, because it's really impractical in almost all cases. If this cannot be done, special care. Okay, so that's what I'm relying on. Special care. Not to touch grounded objects. Use only one hand at a time. Grasp the test prods on the handles and never touch the metal dips. Stand on a well-insulated floor. Yeah, use only one hand at a time. Put your spare hand behind your back. Get into practice of doing that. Good policy discharge capacitors. So, so that, that's the safety issues that, that they're pointing out. But you see, they really don't go clearly into what the problem is with all these devices with two-pronged plugs and no polarization in, in the plug. They really don't come out and explain it in detail. Or, or maybe they do somewhere else and I missed it. Anyway, I'm talking too much, aren't I? So, oh, here's my, uh, my late-night project here. Uh, in the evenings, if I'm going to do a project in my shop here, I just do it on my own. I don't... I, I do I do I do shop projects, improve my shop. Okay, not that. So where are we at with this meter now? I don't know. So let's find out. Let's put this guy, leave him on the side. I did make another cable here. I'll show you in a second. Okay, cable talk. So, here's the single probe for use in both AC and DC applications, right? Because it has a little switch. And what I did was I just added this, the ground wire onto it. Yahoo! So, this is now fully functional. Then I made up a second one. There it is here. Just out of parts around my shop, grounding clip lead, and the business end, a simple pointer, and inside here is a million ohm resistor. No switch. This is always, always on. Always in. Always there. There we are. So now I've got the proper, and this is a shielded wire. I use the shielded wire. The shield is grounded back at the meter, and of course just open-ended out here. Yeah, that was one of my evening projects. Now, turn on the meter here. There we go. 
we need some kind of voltage to test again. So I start again. I'm just going to run through it here. Remind, remind myself where I am with this meter. AC. AC. Okay, so again, what the first thing I should do is put the meter off. Duh. No power. Ring the bell with your head. Okay, uh, the zero is really, really close. So do it like that. Just giving it a minute to warm up. Okay, so I'll now apply the test DC voltage. Check and see. Why oh, we got this thing set to AC? I should have checked the settings here. DC, DC 50 volts. Here we go. Okay, so on this meter, this is reading on the 50 volt scale about 15 there. Okay, and on my uh, not to be trusted little supply meter. Uh, well, 18. So we don't know. We don't know from that little meter what it is. Is it? You know, once again, the guy with two meters then never knows what the voltage is. But I'm a guy with three meters. In fact, keep counting. I got so many meters here. A level of confusion can just shoot through the roof. Okay. Now, let's see what the digital one. Yeah, oh, I know some one of the comments somebody mentioned them using this as the standard. Yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> I am using that as my standard. That and the other digital meter which did not agree 100%. So, okay, 17.5 volts. Now we need to look at this one really carefully and see if we aren't right around. And bearing in mind the meter's on its side, so the pointer will be just probably tip down a little bit. So I'm getting down here to read it. Now I read that as just a hair under 16. So we will adjust the DC calibration here a little wee bit. So why not? DC calibration is this one here. And we'll make this read exactly right. A 17 Checking the voltage myself here. Just one second. 17.5 still. Okay. Make this meter read 17.5. Might have to do this a few times to get it really to get all the Yeah, that's good. That's 17.5 right there. Next we will do the AC side. So to do the AC side, disconnect the DC supply here. Flip this to AC. And disconnect this lead. Oh no, this meter it doesn't matter. I'm gonna say you want to make sure there's no leads connected. Well, the AC goes in here. There is no lead connected. Let me flip it back up to DC here. So you can see the zero is wandering off. Let's get the zero absolutely. This was sticking a bit if I remember right too. So I'm gonna kill the power again. Give it a few moments. I'm trying to now if I remember right, I couldn't mechanically get this up to where it needs to go. Oh look at that. So much with what I remember. So that, that'll probably upset the uh, DC calibration of that, but that's okay. Okay, now we're 100%. So I know why these meters uh, on, on warm up, why they fly up now. It's just the relative variations in the heating and operation of the, 12A, the two part 12AU tube as it warms up. As it goes out of balance for a while, and that, that causes a reading on the meter. 
Okay, now we adjust the real the electronic zero. Okay, and I got my head where there's no parallax. I'm not gonna do it as a okay, so that's good. That's the zero. Now we want to read an AC voltage. Okay, so again to do that. The only thing I can think of, and it's actually what they recommend in the manual, is a uh, line voltage. So once again, out comes the killer cord, the cord of death. This is off. This is plugged in, but, but, but this is off. Off, off, off. Keep it off. Don't plug it in until you need it. So we're going to want to... out that this was the, uh, the wide space but let me just double check that let's just be sure let's just double checking goodness knows even though I double check things I still so that's the white one I think it's this red one there's this hero I'm just <laughs> checking because that's the way I am red one stupidly is the grounded one Don't plug it in red one on here. Green one, pointer coming out of here. So I think I gotta make another, uh, I have to make another cable. Of course I don't make many AC, like most AC voltage measurements I'm gonna do with, with this guy probably. And uh, if it's an output, um, from uh, fr from a radio, so it's across a speaker or something like that. I'm, I'm bound to use this meter, or its cousin, its older cousin, which is up here. So, uh, and that's because those meters are calibrated in decibels, and, and a lot of that work uh, is uh, uh, you're looking you're looking at things in terms of decibels. Decibels a ratio. Here we go. Okay, no. Safety issue. Wow, this is terrible. I have got this bare clip here. So yeah, but it's saying the safety thing. Don't be touching the terminals when you're making connections. I see. I don't have it plugged in. I'm following that other rule. Make the connections, then apply the power. Huh? Uh, maybe this wasn't set right. No, that's that's zero right here. Okay, zeroed on the AC scale. I, I may have booped that up. No harm, no harm done. Okay, everybody, plug it in. Going live. Gonna liven these up. This should be on the 150 volt scale. Closer look, 150 volt scale. You see it. On the 150 volt scale, that is reading all of uh, 85 volts. Wow, it's way off. So it's, it's you know, it should be reading um, 124. Should, should be way up here. So we'll try AC calibration. Wait a minute, is there an AC calibration? It's an AC, AC balance. There's no AC calibration. Wait a second. Wait a second here, we're in big trouble. Stop the presses while I check the manual out on this. Well, I was just looking through the manual, I found something uh, interesting I had missed before. Look at this here. Uh, there are two accessory probes which will make your night VTBM even more versatile. One is the high voltage probe which extends the range of the instrument to 50,000 volts when on the 500 volt scale. Wow, who, who, who is reading 50,000 volts? You're sticking that on a picture tube of a television, an old television. That's scary stuff. 
look at this. The other probe is the high frequency probe. This probe further permits work in RF circuits up to 250 megacycles yielding a direct reading in RMS volts. What, 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 what probe are they talking about here? So I made a probe with a little, uh, for DC work, with a little, with a, with a one mega ohm resistor in the end of it. Is that what this is? Is this the high frequency probe? Or are they talking about a, uh, a rectifying probe, a, uh, a detecting probe? And the probe actually has a diode in it and actually rectifies the uh, RF and produces a DC out of that. I don't know what they're talking about here. This one, I think the probe would just have a huge resistor in the end of it. And it would be a very long probe. I'll show you one of these, uh, which I had in my hand the other day, and I'm looking around for it. Uh, son of a gun. <laughs> You know what? I'm, well, when I see it, when I find it, I will show you my very high voltage meter. Ah, I don't see it. So anyway, it's interesting, just little bits and pieces you pick up when you look in these manuals here. Maybe if I read it from front to back, I would learn everything, but uh, that would be no fun. So the real question is, uh, how, do you, how do you adjust the scale on the AC? And there is no, there is no instruction here for calibrating AC. What it did say, what I did read before, is uh, the way AC measurements work is the AC uh, signal you're measuring is simply full wave rectified by the 6AL5 and the result is applied to the DC meter internally. So if it's reading low, I think that suggests maybe the 6AL5 uh, rectifier the tube is, is not doing its job. So we're going to go after that next. What about the 6AL5? Okay, 6AL5. Double check, 6.3. It's a diode, so some of the settings aren't important. K3761. K3761. 2P00, 2P00. 39. Sensitivity A. Oh, 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 I missed this. Bad thing to miss. A. Hey, stop short of finishing the uh, setup. 39A. Hey, we want to get this right. So, two part tube. You test one part, put these switches, test the other part. You can see, like, see the tube heating up already. Must be working to some degree. And I'm thinking if the DC part of the meter is calibrated and working right, then if it's provided with the right uh, output from this tube, then it will read correctly. So it must be the output from this tube or the circuitry around the tube. Okay. Shorts and leaks. Nothing there. Rectifiers and diodes. And it has to come up just beyond this point here, this reading uh, here. Honky Dory. It also Honky and Dory combined. Okay, so it's definitely not this tube. Now we're into a circuit sort of situation. In the uh, it's a little disappointing. I was hoping the tube would be bad. Goodness no, I got like a hundred of these tubes. Probably the reason is the service these tubes play is very low stress. It's a very low stress thing. And they're probably all good all over the place and that's why they're collecting in people's boxes like uh, like mine. Okay. Uh, if it's a uh, it's a component thing. I guess the place to start then is going to be with the... Uh, I'm just going to take this off. I'm going to have to start... Oh my, the whole, the whole, ah, the whole thing is coming loose here. Son of a gun.
really a uh, He-Man that thing onto there. Holy smokes. So this appears to be sleeved away from the metal uh, even though there's a looks like a fiber sleeve here the back of this is uh, has got a uh, terminal coming off of it and it's connected to a grounded terminal so the fact that there's a uh, looks like a, a non-conductive sleeve in here that really mislead you mislead me but I couldn't see it before okay now what's next here what is next the next is to I was pulling these out the whole idea was so I could do that that was the whole idea so you to at this diode oh oh is there some way the diode could be causing this problem can't imagine it can't imagine that Oh, um, by the way, lots of discussion about this resistor I put in here. Um, okay, so when you're changing from a one, one of these guys uh, as a rectifier over to a silicon rectifier, you're probably going to get a little more voltage out of your power supply because these things have a bigger drop than these diodes. These diodes do. Especially, uh, like this one's out because the drop was 50 volts across it. So without that drop, you end up with a higher B+. Plus one way to fight the higher B plus is to put a resistor in line where the power is coming out of the power supply heading into the rest of the device and based on the current the device is going to draw you can figure you, you can figure out the right size resistor to drop just enough voltage okay I'm not bothering with that I'm accepting the higher B plus voltage I don't think it's that significant in the scheme of things the resistor I'm putting in here is to try to stop an imaginary rush current it may charge up this capacitor upon turning on the instrument and popping my my incorrect diode here that's what I'm trying to do this turned out to be probably a waste of time but it's harmless and the other uh, resistor if I if I did figure that out you know like sometimes people typically just throw 100 ohms in there or something like that this the device probably has an extremely low draw from the power supply uh, a bitch 100 ohm resistor wouldn't help you at all the, the other problem with putting a resistor in like that is you're un you're uh, reducing the regulation of your power supply it, it's not going to produce a fixed voltage as well as it could as far as the uh, unit you're powering is concerned the unit you're powering will see the voltage at the end of that dropping resistor going up and down if the device is drawing varying amounts of current it may not be the case with this the, this guy he just may always draw whatever he draws. It doesn't matter what you're doing to the settings or anything. Don't know. Don't know any of that stuff. What I do know, i got to change this guy out. Um, let's take, before I start fooling around with the soldering iron, let's take a look at the circuitry around the 6AL5. See if we can deduce what parts might be implicated there. Okay, so here's the 6AL5. Okay, so there's a 0.02 capacitor. Uh, that would be implicated as a potential problem. So one here, uh, not so sure this one would. See, like it looks like all the, uh, uh, what is going on here? Let's just make sure here. So in comes the AC. Um, I have to imagine that when this set for AC, the, the signal from the probe is getting out here. 33, 33 megohms. Wow, that's all. They might, might as well just have an open circuit here. <laughs> 33 megohms. This guy and this guy, they could both be implicated. Uh, variations in the way these are two guys are working. Uh, might cause a variation in the bias here 
I shouldn't need it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, this is a diode. What's this doing here? I'm looking at the wrong tube. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm just backing up a little bit now and following this line up here. Okay, the signal comes out here. So obviously the signal comes out here on DC. It comes out here on AC. Duh. What is this? So all these 22s could be implicated. AC balance. AC balance. What is it actually doing? So we got the DC supply here. We've got 10K, 10K variable, 27K, 100. The ground. So, so both these balance controls, this is a balance control, zero adjust. No, okay, uh, I'm not going to try to understand these 100%. But 10K, uh, part of 10K, so let's say 15K through here, and then you're looking at, for some reason, a string of resistors. Maybe they had a lot of 22Ks in the warehouse or something. 22 mega ohms, 22 mega ohms, Jim. Jim, look what it says. Oh my gosh. This is a lot. And another one here. Don't quite get fully what they're up to here, but it's almost as if this is some kind of bias almost but not it's coming into the don't know don't know how it works don't need to know how it works but I need to know oh range switch okay so this is the different than the DC range switch how can it be ohms position yeah here we are range second deck So, so this this is for DC. 1.5 all the way up to 1500. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Do all three of these meters go all the way up to 1500? Yeah, they do, and they all have that 1600 volt capacitor in there. That's this one here. So the AC, the AC signal must be coming through here uh, because this is the range switch. And it's rectified and fired out. Got to be out here. Oh, out here, down here, around here, down here. Down to here. How does it get onto the DC part of the meter? I don't know. Ohm's position, yikes. Oh, let's see, they're showing the three switches. Oh, look what they're doing. I just figured this out. They're showing the switches in the different positions here. It's not very clear, is it? Let's see if I can get this a little bigger. I cannot. I cannot expand this right now. Uh, there's a lot of parts here that could throw this off. And in a sense, we're using the meter itself. So we know the DC appears to be working fine. So if you provide the right DC level into here, I assume. Rear deck range switches with the battery. So this is clearly the ohm meter. Yeah, there it says right there, ohms position. Ohms position. Well, that's talking about this. Well, this has to be the DC. I mean, it goes up to 1500. And then this would be the AC. The AC range, let's see, it goes up to, oh, well, it goes up to 1500 also. Is that so? Well, it's the same range switch, Jim. You're just selecting AC or DC. Right. 
1500 volts AC. Yikes. Um, so I didn't try the different ranges, but if it's a range resistor problem, uh, any, I got, for instance, uh, well, let's look and see what's going on here. The, the, these ranges are all, there's no resistor. 1.5. How's that work? No, no variation in the resistor up here. Only when you get to 500, they start bringing in What's going on? I don't know. You're selecting. So here it looks like here you're selecting the whole signal that's getting there. And when you uh, when you when you select other uh, when you get down to here you're now selecting a padded down part of the signal. 500 volts. Uh, what, what, yeah, 500 and the 1500 have this pad in here. So the rest of them is straight through. Oh, you know what's going on? You're selecting the range switch. You're changing the range switch on the DC part of the meter to suit what's showing up here. But 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 but, but there must be some. Uh, there are there are these. So yeah, you have to think about this hard. So as you snap snap the switch, and normally you don't have to think about anything hard. As you snap the switch you are also uh, moving your way through this. So you're, you're changing the sensitivity of the DC part of the meter, which is looking at what's coming out of this AC rectifier. How, how it all works out when you get up into these high, high ranges, I don't know, but it does apparently, supposedly. I'm not going to be testing this stuff up here. Okay, so the easiest targets hate to say it, this, this capacitor, he's involved in everything. This guy is involved in everything. This is the easiest one to get at. This one, uh, you know, this is a short, shorted. So we're going on the assumption of uh, bad capacitors. Are there any other capacitors in the AC signal circuit here that could somehow influence this? I don't think so. So this is a great big capacitor. I really want to leave these alone. The high quality one. Is so high quality in this meter too? I'm taking a peek. It is not. It is uh, not the same type. But it looks to be like a good one. But it's there all the time. It doesn't matter what, what uh, you've selected here. And this is there all the time. You can bridge over these. Just bridge over them and see if the reading goes up. That's an interesting test. Bridge over the 0.02. I can bridge over this one. I can consciously decide I'm never going to test anything above a certain voltage. I could do away with this or reduce its uh, voltage rating to something within a range of what I got. 600. Most I got is 600 volt capacitor. Well, I got the odd one that's high voltage, but it won't necessarily be 0.05. So I could do that if I needed to. You could probably disable these somehow. That wouldn't that wouldn't help though. The part that has to be disabled is sticking the probes on 500 volts. It's never going to happen. That's never going to happen. Here. What's well, that? AC calibration. Uh, wait a minute now. Now, so I'm looking in the manual for a slightly different meter. AC calibration. Oh, that's on the front panel. These are the front panel. It's a front panel. Is that what it's really called? It's just called zero adjust. There is no AC calibration on the front panel of the meter I'm working on. But you know what? On the IM13 that fits this, there is AC calibration. Did I miss something in the back here? AC balance. I did. AC calibration. Okay, hold on. All bets are off. Everything's over. I'm totally barking up the wrong tree here. Let's go and do the AC calibration thing. Uh. Okay, I boomed up here. And I, you know, it's one of those deals where you have an idea in your head and then you look 
and you, you, you see what you think is evidence for your idea, that's it, you're, you're happy? Shouldn't be happy. So I thought I convinced myself that there was no AC calibration control in here. It's a problem with becoming convinced. Never become convinced. Is anybody watching Sky Scholar videos? Okay, so I watched some more of these things. Uh, this guy is a very interesting character. If you're watching Sky Scholar videos, you can find him doing old talks where he's standing at a podium talking to an audience for, for 20, 30 minutes. I wouldn't recommend those. Uh, they're, they're hard to watch. He has these nicely edited videos that are about five minutes long on, on a discrete topic about the sun, five, 10, maybe 15 minutes long. Those are the ones to watch. All about the sun. If you're into this stuff, if, if you're paying attention to what's, you know, this, this, this part of astronomy and science and that, and I, I, this will be really interesting and shocking, in fact, totally shocking, because what this guy is saying is that everybody has been wrong for over a hundred years thinking that in space gases under the force of gravity condense into bodies like stars. And then, you know, they get so far down, the temperature gets so high, it ignites the nuclear fire, and the whole thing continues as a ball of ball of, of energetic gas. And he says, Well that's absolutely untrue. The sun is a solid body just like just like other planets and, and other things. All suns are solid bodies. Wow, what? And through that observation, I'm pretty excited about this stuff. Through, through, through that analysis, it's all, about, it's all about looking at what's going on in space and including potential chemistry. You see, space has been looked at by astronomers and physics guys. The chemists have not been paying attention. There's no chemistry being, no, chemi no chemistry science being applied to space. Along comes this guy, Dr. Robitaille, and he looked at it, hey, this is all chemistry. So what he says is going on, I'm going to explain this because it's, 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 if you're never going to watch these videos, you at least should hear this. Instead of this theory of the gas collapsing through gravity, he says that's not what happens. When the gas gets close enough together, it begins to condense. It has condensation reactions in it. And in this case, hydrogen, uh, I believe, I'm probably wrong about this, but it'll get the idea across. Anyway, in a single molecule, hydrogen becomes a some, some other form of hydrogen where you have two two atoms that somehow get connected uh, together and form a uh, hydrogen molecule of some sort, uh, hy hydrogen hydrate something. I don't know what. Something happens, and, and when these two molecules join, they become essentially uh, metallic hydrogen into a ball, a uncondensable ball. This is a real problem for the current studying of of, uh, of stars and that, because all kinds of theories are based on the idea that a star can shrink down further, right? Uh, supernova ideas, all these ideas are blown out of the water. And here's the thing about what this guy Robitaille is saying: is if you accept the standard model of the uh, condensed gas model, you cannot explain a whole bunch of phenomenon which have never been explained and are there for all to see. Uh, for instance, the uh, lack of, uh, of uh, um, what do you call it, uh, lines. Um, ah, you know, when you use a prism and you split light and you can see the individual lines. I, I, I just can't think of the right word for it, but you know what I'm talking about now. The sun, if it's a gas, gaseous body, would produce those lines, both produce them and absorb on those lines. There is none. The sun cast light as if it's a solid. It is a solid. That's that's his point. That's why it casts light like a solid. So under the standard accepted explanation that exists today, those phenomena are explained by long tenuous theories of weird things going on to 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 justify this observation. A robotite comes along and goes, forget all that. If you go with this idea that the sun is and stars are solid bodies, all these weirdnesses go away. Everything is explained, and explained relatively simply. Although the science is complicated, the chemistry is complicated, it's way over my head. But relatively speaking, everything gets explained. It's fantastic. So what I think I'm seeing when I look at this man is a man who has uh, discovered the truth in the midst of, of everyone else being confused and off base. It's pretty, pretty exciting, pretty exciting stuff.
Boy, I tell you, I ranted too much about that, didn't I? Okay, let's try this AC calibration control. How, how embarrassing. But, uh, you know, if I was sensitive to being embarrassed, <laughs> I wouldn't be doing this. Yeah. Okay, I got the meter set the other way this time. So we want to do an AC measurement. So we need our really great AC cord there. And then we need the ground cord, which is sat down on the floor. Okay, we're going to bring back the danger cord. Actually, a good idea that I say this out loud. The red one is not what it should be. This one. AC, AC, AC. Think, 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 think. Think, man, think. Connections made. Check ground live in power onto the meter. We're set to AC volts, 150 volt scale. Calibration. calibrations here. Just making absolutely sure I got this right. Zero's off right now. That's kind of interesting. Now I've got this thing turned on its other side, but I'm going to zero it just using the zero control. I think it's a common thing to be zeroing these meters a lot. Even if you get them all balanced out, uh, you know, after a few months they're going to start drifting a little bit inside and the balance is going to come off. This is off. And now it's on. <coughs> so you really want it way up here. Can we get there? Oh yeah. No problem, Jim. So, uh, 120, where are we at here? Today is 123. So what we should be seeing there, 120, you know, accurate enough, 123. Okay, let's cut the power off before we get something bad happens. This out goes under the zero. Zero adjusted. Zero again. Off. It's too high now. I, don't, I guess maybe adjusting this is moving the zero around a little bit. Maybe that's what's happening. So you, although you can adjust the zero, you got to trust the reading that comes later. So that'd be 120, 122, 100. that's crazy accurate there. Okay, once again, power off. off. That's nice. Still going a little low. Let me adjust this DC uh, AC uh, calibration here while we're watching this. Zeroing thing. Yeah, it does move it a little bit. Once again, 
get some more. Wait, wait, way off. What, what, what has changed? We're at 130, almost 140 now. What, what just happened? What just happened? See how sensitive the reading is to the zero adjust. Wildly sensitive. You see, it's almost ridiculous to try to make a meter like this uh, read uh, with super accuracy because of all these, these, these problems here. Okay, let's go back to... This may not go quite to zero. Yep, it's going there. It's going right past. Let's just keep working on it here. Zero it properly. Okay, we'll do it so accurately this time. There. zero there. That's that's not bad. Okay. That's not bad. That's it. There we got it. It shows zero when it's zero. Eventually. Now, what about the balance? some kind of uh, so I think we watch the zero and if it moves off the zero as I switch from range to range you know, maybe it's DC balance that needs to be adjusted I can't remember so let's let's mess it up we'll do that DC balance. No effect. I need a DC voltage on here to make this make this do this. What am I not doing right? Not doing something right. So I'm barely moving it. And not reacting at all. Why would that have no effect? think here what it says is flip back and forth between the DC plus and minus with the meter zeroed and keep adjusting the zero until the meter stays zeroed and doesn't come off zero it, it doesn't, doesn't seem to me it can work this way but we'll try it so it's I don't know how I can do this So it's not moving, but it's not on zero anymore. <laughs> so what good is that? I don't know how you can do this to drive it to zero if it's not... This doesn't make sense to me what it's suggested. Unless, unless then you're supposed to zero it out using the mechanical thing, which I don't think that's the case at all. Maybe what you're doing is you're just trying to get this balanced. It's 
balanced now. The fact that it's not right on zero is not important. It doesn't make sense to me at all. It's balanced with this control set so the zero is off. It doesn't make sense. Not making any sense. The next thing then is to do the uh, DC calibration process. I think we can do that. This lead has no resistor in the uh, up here. Get this out of here. Let's get this right out of here. Okay. Pull that out of there too. Already DC voltage. Should be around 20 volts DC. Getting just above 20 here. But remember, the zero is not on. Um, so to zero this meter. to make it zero whatever that balancing thing was goodbye to that so that's about zero Back to reading this voltage it's dead on 20 okay we'll read it with the uh, my digital standard Seventeen point six is what it actually is. Why didn't I go through this just a while ago? I did. Go through it again. Seventeen point six. Grab the DC calibration. Seventeen. Seventeen and just under seventeen and a half. That's good. Should stand the meter up now and take a look at it too. It's reading. It's actually reading a little less now. I did all this calibration with the meter on its side. Well, I haven't done the final calibration yet. Seventeen. Is that true? Is that what's happening there? Interesting. Tip it this way, the reading goes a little higher. Tip it the other way, it goes a little lower. the meter is going to be Thank 
need to just stand up just for a little while. What if I give you a ground uh, an armadillo? There, that's what I needed. Seventeen and a half. Now we want to check the zero. And if anything, it's just a hair below, but it's it's, it's close enough. Very good. I think. So I think this this calibrates and zeroes out the DC scale. It's reading the proper amounts now. So we'll back to AC and see what's happened there. Okay. I guess we can assume when you switch this meter to AC, this lead is disconnected inside the meter completely. That's an assumption. There's my uh, high quality test lead here. Bring down the cable of death. Round is red. Pop is green. is in. AC. Zero is off. You see the zero rise up there. Zero it. Because that's what you got to do with these meters. Now it's ready. 150 scale. 150 scale. 150 scale. Zero came off. And we just have to accept that. You got to zero these things a lot. Hit the switch and see 122 volts, and the current voltage is 123 volts. 120, really 121 is what I would read that as. Uh, check the zero just by pulling this out. 120 volts on the end of this. Just turn this off. Zero should be good, I said it. Takes a long time to get all the way back there. A tiny, tiny adjustment on the AC calibration. Make sure you don't get these mixed up. This is usually where everything goes wonky. You grab the wrong, make a wrong adjustment. By the time you realize it, you've undone everything. 123, I should say me. I shouldn't say you. It's me. Well, I don't know. Can I can get it any more accurate than that? I'm killing myself now. Okay, so we got a meter. And I'm going to go and change the B plus power supply in it <laughs> after doing all this. So uh, maybe I'll do this off camera. I'll get all three of these meters out, get the cabinets off, get them all lined up on the bench here, all side by side. I'll change the diodes and all of them. And then we'll, we'll hook them up and we'll compare them all. Why not just compare them all. Align, uh, calibrate them all. By the end of that, I'll be so sick of these meters, it'll be time for something else. So uh, thanks for watching uh, today's situation. <laughs> <laughs> as best I can call it. Hey, let's just check and see what's going on outside. Well, there appears to be nothing going on outside. At all. Okay. I'm going to be out there with the snow blower shortly. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you uh, tomorrow with all three of these meters going. <laughs>